Hello everybody and welcome back to another video on tutorial in Brightspace D2L. This time we're looking at discussion assignment and we're going to go through it from a student's perspective and then hop into a teacher's perspective, you know, as usual. Uh, again, as with all the tools, full screen mode is uh, typically encouraged, uh, reduce any kind of distra distractions from a, uh, a student's perspective. So first thing you can see is a notification bell so the purpose of the discussion assignment really is to um, have a, well, as, as it's called, a discussion surrounding a, perhaps a document, a, a bit of work, a deliverable, and develop some of the ideas to encourage higher order and higher level thinking. So in a pedagogical sense, the experience that students will have is a deeper understanding. If we you know, look at Bloom's taxonomy, um, those deeper layers of understanding to really internalize the content uh, in this case, a molecular biology uh, yeah, video. Excuse me. So we can see a bit of a, uh, you know, some notification bells, just to see some of the activity of the students. Um, but as with all the tools, we do have a scaffolded approach um, that makes kind of sense. Step one being reading the instructions, right? Step two is hand it in. And then step three would be to discuss with uh, the peers and then an open discussion and then selecting the most valuable contributions followed by, and lastly, a reflection on the assignment. So let's, you know, after we've handed it in, what we encourage is to discuss with two other peers. So I've been assigned, you know, randomly two of my fellow students and I have to go into their assignment and well, start discussions. And I have to have a minimum number of contributions. So I would go, for example, to this student, student number two, and their molecular biology uh, deliverable. So I go through and I open up this panel and I can see that there's already just a little bit of, um, yeah, interactivity happening there. Um, so what we can do is continue reading and then, huh, okay. Representative cells, that seems something interesting. So I could highlight that and make an inline annotation that would be linked to that. Um, can you please elaborate or el elaborate? I don't understand how it is digest. Now, this of course doesn't make too much sense, uh, practically speaking. But for the sake of the demonstration, we can see that student number one has um, on the timeline actually um, looked at it. Look, looked at it. And then I can go ahead and light. Uh, like and reply to student two who actually annotated their own work. So I could say um, it is related to X particle, right? Um, I could even record my voice and add an attachment and then have that discussion kind of uh, unfold, let's say. Uh, I also have to grade the document, right? Um, I, have to, I have to do two things, which is grade the document as well as participate in the discussion. And then I can close that. And the process really follows um, this, this logic. And this is, you know, deliverable number one. And then I have to discuss it on the second deliverable too. Then I can get an overview of the discussions that are on my work. So this is my own discussion, let's say. At which point, you know, I can open it up. Based on the timeline, the white dots indicate discussion threads that have started. Oh, let's have a look what's happening here. Okay, wonderful. So I have to wait and see some more uh, contributions, let's say, from my peers. So once I've finished the discussion with the assigned peers, <clears throat> then an uh, open discussion is unlocked. There I can see all the deliverables that have been all um, submitted by the entire uh, student body that are that's in this course or has received that assignment. And I can sort it based on, uh, on different criteria. So once I've done that and participated in the open discussion, I can actually go ahead and select the most valuable contributions. Now, the, the really the pedagogical value of this is it provides not only the students, but the instructor an idea of what is important, right? Where, where would we uh, see the most value in terms of the contributions? Because what that'll do is it'll actually give the teacher a guide, of, a, a kind of a guide and a compass as to um, you know, what, what, what students find useful. So I could say, well, this one seems the most valuable. I'll select that one. Done. And then 
they all get tallied up, let's say, by the other by the other students' uh, contributions. Then I could write a reflection. You know, what did I actually learn? What did the discussion teach me? How did I actually um, engage in it? And what would I do for better next time? And then I could submit. Really closing that feedback loop. Now the grades haven't been published yet, which actually brings me to now the teacher's perspective. So I'll hop in there now. So now we have the teacher's perspective loading. So, uh, well, we'll just click permission here, continue. At which point we'll see an overview of the discussion that's been engaged in by students. So I can look at the statistics, have a look at, you know, where is everybody in this whole discussion, right? Have they read the instructions? Have they handed it in? What's the minimum number of discussions they participated in? In this case, the requirement was set up as two. Number of comments, comments received, everything here. All the different analytics, as well as their reflection. The submissions, I could download them all together if I want. I could go to the discussion, actually participate in the discussion as the teacher, perhaps to guide it, perhaps to look at you know, what, what's actually been happening, maybe to have students think a little bit more about what they're doing. So I could go ahead as a teacher and open it up. In this case, I'll do it easier like this. Uh, you know, please refer to uh, lecture 50, uh, for example. And then the teacher can go ahead and do that. Now, looking a, a little bit further, after the teachers kind of input their discussion, input their, their, their feedbacks, then we can actually, yeah, show the selected best contributions, right? And I can look at them and I can click show. So I can see what students find useful. Um, at which point I can get all the reflections here, click that and get a bit of a, a summary. And then I can actually publish the grades which will synchronize back into the D2L gradebook. Now, in the edit mode, we can change how the collaboration options work, whether it be individually or as a group or discuss within groups um, just to manage some of the annotations and the submission instructions, what could be submitted, what needs to be discussed on. The discussion itself, every student is required to discuss you know, X amount, and there could be also the grading, which is um, the students grading each other's work quantitatively is optional, as well as the open discussion, which is optional, and valuable, most valuable contribution is optional, as well as the reflection and grading. So really, it really depends on, on how complex slash simple the activity needs to be. It really doesn't, um, it really doesn't have an, an impact on, on uh, it, it's really designed to be flexible in that sense, to fit into learning designs and not the other way around. So, we can also, uh, just on, on the last point, actually, uh, amount of contributions students can submit, right, could be a minimum of 10, right? Um, for example, we can really look at how, how much con contribution they need to put in to get their grade in the discussion. So once we're happy with that, we can uh, just click Save. Okay, I'm happy with the discussion assignment. Let's have students go ahead. So that's discussion assignment in D2L Brightspace. Thank you for watching.